in cities all across the world these days, human beings' lives are being changed and communities are being changed pretty much on a daily basis. We live in a world where people are on the move almost constantly, some willing to choose to do so and others are being forced to do so by circumstances that are beyond their ability to control. These changes take place and various shifts occur in the lives of people. And when they happen, sometimes they experience anger or they raise questions of equality and fairness and transformation and the placement of the poor and changing of neighborhoods and the forces that are at work within the world in which we find ourselves living and moving and having our being these days. And so this is also a time for the church to raise the issue of not being afraid to cross barriers that are often being built around us every day. Congregations and churches and ministry settings are continually being called to travel to their own cities or communities of Nineveh. Sometimes that means going long distances, sometimes that means simply walking out the door. We're being forced to overlook some of our hangups in order to reach out to and to call people who are not yet involved or participating in any way in the life of God's community of the church. Now this requires godly wisdom to carefully invite those who are outside to and to motivate those who are inside to actually get about the business of sharing the good news of the gospel with others out there in Nineveh. Otherwise, we might very well discover that there is a large fish waiting for us. Waiting to swallow us. until we make the sick, the fish sick. Which is kind of what happened with old Jonah way back there a long time ago when he was thrown into the sea and the fish swallowed him up and he spent three days there. I can't think of a much more unpleasant place to be <clears throat> than in the belly of a fish for three days Not a very pleasant place. Not a good place to spend time out. We sometimes talk to our children, we put our children in time out. We put them in a chair and say, well, you sit there until I tell you to get up and then we wait and they go and sometimes they sit there and sometimes they wiggle and squirm and do all those kinds of things, which I'm sure Jonah did some wiggling and squirming too in the belly of that fish. But God had a mission for Jonah, and Jonah, when he received the call, instead of going where God called him to go, he went the opposite direction. We wouldn't do that, would we? Wouldn't dare. Wouldn't think of it. We'd say, yes, Lord, just, just let me. Yeah. Lord, do you really want me to go to those people? You know who they are. You know what they've done. They're not like us. They're totally different. They don't think the same way we think. They don't act the same way we act. They don't look the same way we look. You 
You want us to go there? That's what I said, Jonah. You see, we are called to go into the world around us and to go to those places that perhaps we don't feel the most comfortable in going to. When God appoints us to take a journey to such places, we find ourselves trying to make all kinds of excuses or think up all kinds of reasons why we can't go. Well, you know, Lord, I just got too much on my plate right now. I've got this to do and that to do and... Let somebody else do it. Kind of goes back to Moses and Aaron, doesn't it? God sends Moses down to Egypt to deliver his people there. Moses says, "Um, send Aaron, please. You see, the truth is we run into people on a daily basis. We cross paths with people on a daily basis who have no inkling of the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And we are the ones who are given that good news to to share and to proclaim it. Got any fishermen or fisher persons here? Got to be careful these days. Be inclusive. I was taught a few things about fishing, and the first thing that I was taught about fishing is it requires some patience. I remember I went fishing, the first thing I'd do, I'd cast a line out there. Nope. In fact, I was so impatient that it had to be a really quick fish or a very hungry fish to even get close to the hook that I had put out there for them. I didn't learn to fish in salt water. I learned to fish over in the mountains and the trout streams and had my favorite hole that I went to right over behind the Souders Chapel Baptist Church and I'd catch my limit every time I went there. But that was a long time later. The first fishing reel I had was one of those spinning reels and I'd throw it out there and the line would get all tangled up. I'd spend most of my time just getting the line straightened back out again to where I could reel it in and do something with it. So it requires some patience. Also requires some bait. A lure of some kind. If you don't have the right one, you can cast out there all day long and nothing will hit it. But if you got the right one, they come long, hit it pretty quickly sometimes. First time I went fishing out on the salt water, it was up on the northern neck and went out with some friends in the church and we were fishing for rockfish. And nobody on the boat was getting anything but me. (laughs) It seemed like every time I dropped a hook in the water, there was another fish on the end of it, and I was trying to pull it in. I found out why they call them rockfish, because it's just like trying to get a rock out of the water. (laughs) I wonder why they didn't invite me to go back. Usually the best bait is the live bait. And sometimes you can get the right lure and the fish just seem like that's the exact thing that they're looking for that day. And as soon as it hits the water, they hit it. But other days you can go out there and spend the whole day and not catch a thing. Except for maybe a cold. But that doesn't have anything to do with the weather. Fish. 
And sometimes we do that in the church. We, we, we take the wrong bait. We get so impatient. If we don't get some kind of result immediately, we think we haven't done anything. And so we just decide, well, what's the use? But a good fisherman will say, well, even if I didn't catch anything today, I'm going to go back. And after a while, the persistence pays off and you catch something that makes it worthwhile to go out again. There's a lot of folks who have never witnessed to their faith to anyone outside of the church. It's kind of like us trying to fish in the, in the aquarium, so to speak. But sometimes you got to go to the river, and sometimes the river's not the kind of river you really want to spend a lot of time around. It might be a little bit polluted. You got folks that are different from us. We got folks that don't seem to, as I said earlier, they just not like us. And so sometimes it's hard for us to spend enough time fishing to catch anything. Especially if we're worried about, well, if we catch them and they become a part of the life of the church, then they might take over what I've been doing for so long. You know, I'm not really ready to give that up yet. Oh, Jonah was just a reluctant fisherman. He just did not want to go to Nineveh. And the reason he didn't want to go to Nineveh is because he knew that God would be faithful. And if these people actually did, by some miraculous means, repent of what they were doing, that God wouldn't do anything to them. And he really would have rather do something to them. So he got to go a second time. And this time he did go and he went to Nineveh. He told them what God told him to tell them and lo and behold, what did they do? Put on their sackcloth and ashes and repented. And Jonah was furious. <laughs> Furious. God, I knew you were going to do that. That's why I didn't want to go. We have a good news to share with people, but in order to share it with them, sometimes we've got to take the time to develop some kind of a relationship with them first. Because if they don't come to a place where they can trust us, if they don't come to a place where we can be something that is credit, credit I can't think of the word, can't say the word right now. Anybody know the word? <laughs> Credible, there, there we go. Somebody did it. To where we are credible in their sight, then we find ourselves getting into a situation or into a circumstance where we don't really have much of a way of connecting with those folks. It's called relationship building. And it's even harder these days in the world we live in because we've got ourselves, you know, gated communities. We've got places where we just isolate ourselves from, from anyone else along the way so that we don't have to deal with them on a daily basis other than if we happen to cross paths with them somewhere along the way. But we're not going to develop any kind of relationship that way. But Jonah somehow connected with these folks. And he connected with them with a harsh message that he was giving to them, repent, or 40 days... Uh, this is going to be kaput.
Sometimes a person will come to you with a situation or a circumstance in their life that's going on and you have an opportunity, if not to do anything else, is to simply to listen, to give them the opportunity to share whatever it is that it might be in the midst of or what they're going through at that particular moment in time. And you begin to develop a relationship of trust. And once that relationship comes, then by the power and the direction of the Holy Spirit, there comes a time when you can share the good news of the gospel. And I don't mean by preaching the Bible to them from Genesis to Revelation, but it might be simply saying, you know, my relationship with God has helped me through that kind of a difficulty. Can I pray with you about it? And you might be surprised at the result that takes place just simply by giving that kind of a invitation to listen and to care enough to offer a prayer. Nineveh's out there. I don't know what your Nineveh might be, but there's a Nineveh out there for each one of us. There are places where we, where we are reluctant to go. There are people who, with whom we are reluctant to develop relationships. There are situations and circumstances in life that makes it difficult for us to, to move beyond the bounds of what we call our comfort zones. But brothers and sisters, if we don't come to that place, particularly in these days in which we live, the church is going to be in serious trouble. We have good news to share. Hopefully Jesus Christ has made a difference in your life. That's the reason why you're here today. You're seeking to worship God and to give thanks and to offer praise for what it is that God has done within your own life experience. And that you want others to somehow to experience that kind of blessing in a world where there is so much, so much that people are struggling with. So go to Nineveh, guys and gals. Share the good news of the gospel. Be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. When the door is opened, go in. Share the good news. Watch the kingdom grow. And rejoice. And what God will do through you. So be it. Amen.